Thanks for joining us on Wellness Talk Radio. I'm Chris Costello, and today we are talking with Wendy Suzuki. And uh, this is just going to be a fascinating interview. And if you'd like to hear the interview later online, you can go to wellnesstalkradio.com. Dr. Suzuki, thank you so much for being on the program. Thank you for having me, Chris. So we're going to be talking about your book, Healthy Brain, Happy Life, a personal program to activate your brain and do everything better. What a great read this was. Oh, thank you. (laughs) Yeah, it's one of the things that I was really taken by was that throughout all of your, your brain researcher and throughout all of your research, you have really come across some very surprising insights about the brain. Some of those insights have come from you know, initially from personal observations uh, in myself. And um, as I talk about in the book, really the whole story is one of transformation for me. I, I worked so hard to become a scientist, a neuroscientist, and, and establish my own research lab. And it took a lot of hard work, a lot of dedication, and I did that. But I, I kind of did it too much. I, I became completely unbalanced in, in terms of, all the time working and no uh, time playing, no, uh, not a great social life and, and too much takeout food, which left me 25 pounds overweight. And I just had this realization one day, uh, I was actually on a river, river rafting trip in Peru, uh, where I realized I was the weakest person on the whole trip. And I wasn't completely unhealthy. I was young. I was I should have been, you know, as fit as anybody else, but I was the weakest one. And that just kind of kicked me into gear and made me realize, you know, I really need to get into shape. Um, And by the way, I also don't have a social life either, so I need to work on that as well. So um, the weight thing was easier to work on, so I went to the gym and um, got myself a trainer, and this obviously did not happen overnight. This was months and months of regular working out and finding out which classes I liked and getting more regular with my workouts. But I did it, and I really upped my cardio, my cardiovascular level and uh, started exercising really regularly. And when I got to a certain level, I really noticed that not only was my mood improved, but once I started to go to the gym, my, my mood really hit the roof. But once I got to a certain level of exercise, regular exercise, I noticed that my memory was noticeably better. My attention span was noticeably better. And I seemed to be kind of doing things more out of the box. I, I was developing new classes. I, I, my creativity seemed to be better as well. And that's what really um, uh, made me go back to the literature, the neuroscience literature, and ask, what do we really know? about what exercise is doing to your brain. And what I found was an exciting set of, of studies showing that of all the things we know about, this is including, you know, brain games and, and, and learning games, out of all of those things put together, the most evidence for something that could actually change the neurobiology of your brain is exercise. And how does it do that? Well, um, we know that increases in exercise A lot of these studies were done in rats. Increase in exercise in rats, you give them running wheels, will actually change the thickness of the outer cortex of the brain, the outer covering of the brain called the cortex. So it actually makes your brain grow. Um, What it's doing is um, brain cells are made up of cell bodies, and there's kind of these tree branch-like extensions called dendrites, and that's where all the neurons get their inputs from. And those dendrites grow with exercise, making more connections or synapses. You get more support cells in the brain called glia cells, and you get more blood vessels uh, called angiogenesis, the birth of new blood vessels in the brain, which is great because the the brain is the number one uh, user of oxygen of the whole body. The more oxygen, the more blood, oxygenated blood you get to the brain, the better your brain works. So all of this is stimulated with exercise. You're obviously a a brain researcher uh, at NYU, and how far did you have to dig down before you got to this, okay, aha, the the exercise part of it is so critical? It really was not that hard at all. I just needed to look at the literature. I was actually 
very well versed with the earlier studies that led to our current understanding of how important exercise was. Um, I happened to do my undergraduate dissertation, my undergraduate thesis work, I should say, with a, a really seminal neuroscientist named Marion Diamond at UC Berkeley. And she showed way back in the 1950s that when you raise rats in what she called an enriched environment, uh, which is kind of like the Disney world of rat cages with big space, lots of toys, lots of other rats to play with, and you compare those rat brains with rat brains that have been raised in what they called impoverished environment, so no toys, a small space, just a couple of other rats in there. She showed these big brain changes, including the outer covering of the brain got thicker, angiogenesis, as I talked about, um, increases in blood vessels, and more synapses in the brain. Well, when they went to figure out what exactly was it about those enriched environments that were causing all those changes, the answer turned out to be the exercise. Those rats in, in Disney World were running around a lot more than the rats in the impoverished environment. And that discovery came in the 1990s, but the original findings were way, made way back in the late 1950s, early 1960s. So I was very familiar with those early studies from my undergraduate work. So it was just a, a little leap to get with the program that we now know that is actually exercise doing all of this. And, and I was fascinated to know not only in rats what's happening, but how can we apply this? How can we use this knowledge in people? Because that's what I was noticing in my and how hard was it, Wendy? Uh, you talk a, about a lot of your personal stories in uh, Healthy Brain, Happy Life. How hard was it for you to translate that knowledge into actual, I mean, now you're teaching exercise classes. What was yeah. that like? So to tell you the truth, it was a lot of fun. It was really, I, I felt like I found my second passion in life. So the first passion was kind of the brain, neuroscience and brain plasticity. And I had been studying long-term memory, parts of the brain important for uh, memory, uh, including a structure called the hippocampus for many years, for about 20 years. But this kind of reinvigorated me and re-inspired me in a new area, which is the effects of exercise on the brain. And it was so exciting to me because I look at this area as kind of a, a scientist's dream. There's so much known about the neurobiology of exercise from studies in rodents. But what we're missing is how do you translate that to humans? There's some evidence that exercise is doing uh, improving brain function, particularly for attention, but there are many other kinds of brain functions that we don't have really definitive answers for, and that's what I want to understand. I want to understand the prescription of exercise that will allow us to not only feel better and, and improve our mood, which many people appreciate and, and experience, but how much exercise and what kind of exercise do you need to do to improve your memory improve your attention, improve your creativity? Those are the questions that I want to answer in my lab. And how much uh, influence does food have? I know that's a lot of people are, you know, really looking at different diets and how they affect brain functioning. Yeah, um, you know, my, uh, my, my feeling is that food is obviously fuel for the body, but the brain is part of the body. So those kinds of diets that are optimal or giving you energy for your body are also very good for your brain. And I'm talking about, you know, high uh, fruits and vegetables, low low amounts of red red meat, um, lots of water, lots of liquid. So those are those are general rules. And there's also some surprising things like, of course, sugar. Too much sugar is not not good. But sugar in small amounts can actually enhance brain function. We've known that for a long time. So there's, there's going to be some interesting kind of twists and turns in there as well. And it was very interesting in the book, you talk a lot about your dad and, and how he had uh, memory issues. Yeah, yeah. So he, like many older adults, uh, has loss of memory, uh, dementia. And, you know, I talk about how frustrating that was because at that time I was, you know, a, a, a leading expert on the neuroanatomy of memory, parts of the brain important for memory, what their connections are, what their physiology is, that has been my specialty for the last 20 years. Yet I didn't work with clinical populations and I felt you know, completely helpless. I couldn't help my father one little bit except for get him a, a really great neurologist. So I definitely had a lot of contact to be able to do that. But just having to 
deal with that. I mean, I'm certainly not alone. Many people uh, deal with this. You know, a lot of things came out of it, and one of them is that, you know, memory is so precious. But despite the fact that, that uh, his memory for what he ate for lunch yesterday isn't so hot, he still has, you know, his core memories, the things that he loves. Um, he, like me, is a foodie, loves food, loves talking about the next time he's going to come visit me in New York and we're going to eat out at lots of different restaurants, loves Broadway musicals. And so all of that is still completely intact. But you also see how precious those everyday memories are that he he doesn't have a very good grasp on uh, anymore. And are there new treatments that are coming out that, that give people hope, or what's that whole, what's that looking like? A lot of people are working on uh, models to try and, and find new and innovative ways to improve brain function in situations of dementia and Alzheimer's disease. I have to say from, from you know, obviously the focus of the book, one of the best preventions is to keep your health, brain healthy, not, not wait until you're, you know, in your 70s to start, but start getting your brain healthy now. So I mentioned that exercise increases the number of blood vessels that, are, that, that grow in the brain, and that is a, a great way to improve overall brain health is to have uh, as, many, as many blood vessels, as much perfusion of, of healthy blood in your brain as you can as you get older. And so exercise uh, is a wonderful preventative measure uh, for all sorts of uh, things that degenerate your brain as you get older, uh, unfortunately. Um, this is not a prevention. I'm not saying it's going to prevent uh, these things. But it can certainly keep your brain healthier for longer relative to if you do not exercise and take advantage of these, um, the, these kinds of uh, plasticity that we know that, that go on in the brain with exercise. Dr. Suzuki, you're coming out to California uh, in, I, I believe, in June, right? Yes, just next week, actually. Next Sunday I leave. So great. going to be out there soon. And where will you be and how can people find you? I know uh, yeah. they want to hear more. Well, I'm going to be um, a number of places on the West Coast. I, I come uh, to L.A. on June 1st, and I have a big event at 7 p.m. at the Lululemon store in Pasadena. We're going to do, and that's a free event, so all you have to do is RSVP to the Lululemon uh, Pasadena store, and uh, I'm going to be teaching an exercise class um, followed by a a, a discussion about the book and stories from the book, and that's going to be really fun, and the book will be sold there. And then I'm flying up to Seattle, Washington. I'm giving a public address at the University of Seattle at Washington at 6 o'clock on Wednesday, June 3rd. And uh, we're going to have a wonderful alumni event for NYU alumni in Seattle as well. And that's also open to the general public. I believe it's sold out right now, but you can go to the University of Seattle, Washington uh, website and, and look for that event on, on Wednesday the 3rd. And then I'll be doing a book signing at a bookstore in San Francisco on June 4th. So that'll be, that'll be really exciting, which is my hometown. I was born in San Francisco. Um, but I went to graduate school in Southern California, so I'm really looking forward to uh, kind of traveling up and down the state. Yeah, back home again. Yeah. Where where can people find you on the internet? Yeah. So I have uh, my lab website is SuzukiLab.com, and uh, that describes all of my research, from my memory research to my exercise research. It talks about my exercise class. I teach a free exercise class in New York every week, uh, except for when I'm going to go on my book tour. Uh, and you could also go to my book, my specific book website, which is wendysuzuki.com. Dr. Suzuki, thank you so much for being on the program, and I look forward to having you out in California. Great. Thanks so much, Chris. Thanks for-